Hello and welcome to more more data mining with Weka. This is class two, and uh, we're going to look at two topics in this class. In the first three lessons, we're going to look at discretization, and in the last three lessons, we're going to look at document classification. So let's get going. Discretizing is transforming numeric attributes to nominal. And there's a couple of obvious ways of doing this. We've got a numeric attribute with a certain range, and we could take that range and chop it into a certain number of equal parts or bins. Just divide it into equal bins, and uh, wherever a numeric value falls, we take that bin and use its identification as the discretized version of the numeric value. Or instead of using equal sized bins, we can adjust the size to make the number of instances that fall into each bin approximately the same, equal frequency binning. And we're going to talk about those two things. We'll talk briefly about cho the choice of the number of bins, and then we'll talk about how to exploit the ordering information that's implicit in a numeric value, but not implicit in a nominal value that you convert it to. So let's look at equal width binning. I'm going to take ionosphere.arf, which has got a lot of numeric attributes, and I'm going to use J48. I've uh, set Weka up here with ionosphere and J48, and I've run J48, and I get 91.5% accuracy. I'm just going to look at some of these numeric attributes. The first one, A1, has got just two distinct values, 0 and 1, actually, and you can see the two values here. The third attribute, has got a bunch of different values ranging between minus 1 and plus 1 and kind of scrunched up towards the top end. The uh, fourth attribute also varies between minus 1 and plus 1, and it uh, looks like it could almost be a normal sort of distribution. So I'm going to uh, go to a filter here, an unsupervised attribute filter called discretize. And amongst the parameters here is the number of bins, and I'm going to use 40 bins. And equal frequency, we're going to use equal width binning, not equal frequency binning. Leave that at false. And I'm going to run it and look at the result. And here is the first attribute from 0 to 1, just two values. Here's the one that was all scrunched up to the top end. This is a 0, a sorry, this is minus 1. This is 0 and this is plus 1. And here's the one that looked kind of normal, and you can see it's sort of normalish, except for a bunch of extra values down here at minus 1 and plus 1. I can look at those in the Edit panel, actually, if I undo the effect of that, and go and look at the Edit panel and sort by this attribute. You can see all the minus 1s here, and then a bunch of numbers, and then up at the top you can see a bunch of extra plus 1s in this column. OK, now I've applied the filter again. I'm going to classify it, see what J48 makes of that. And uh, we get 87.7% accuracy, which is not very good. I can go back and change the number of bins. I'm going to go straight to two bins here. Uh, I'm going to first of all undo the effect of this, and then apply the two bin version. And you can see that, well, this was two bins to start off with, but you can see that this attribute, there's only two possible values, and this attribute is discretized them into two bins. And if I run J48 again, I get 90.9, .9, which is pretty good, actually. Going back to the slide, you can see the results for different numbers of bins here. And the last one, 90.9, .9, is about the same, not too much uh, worse than the original undiscretized version. And what's more, the tree has only got 13 nodes. It's a much smaller, much more economical tree than the one we had before, and very little loss in accuracy. So that looks really good. I'm going to move now to equal frequency binning. So let's go back here and take the discretization filter and change it to equal frequency. I'm going to go back to 40 bins here, and I'm going to run that. First, I need to undo the discretization, and then I'm going to apply this uh, filter. Well, it can't do much with the first attribute. That was binary to start off with. But here you can see that this is where they were all scrunched up towards the top end. This is minus 1, this is 0, and this is plus 1. And you can see that where possible, it's chosen the number of uh, the size of the bins to uh, equalize the frequency. It can't do anything with this large bin at the top, or this one at the bottom and this one in the middle, because all of the attributes here 
uh, all of the instances have plus one, and here they've got zero, and here they've got minus one. But where it can, it's kind of equalized the frequency. And this is the one that used to look normal. You can see there's some extra minus ones, zeros, and plus ones, and it's kind of equalized the frequency by choosing appropriate bin widths. I can go and classify, and J48 gives me 87 percent, which is a bit disappointing, not very good at all. Now I can try with different numbers of bins. Let me change this to uh, two bins. Um, need to undo this one first and then apply. And it hasn't done much here, but which was originally just two bins. But you can see that here we've got two equal size bins. That's what histogram equalization, equal frequency is trying to do, make bins with the same number of instances in each. And if I just run J48 on that, I get 83%, which again is pretty disappointing. So coming back to the slide, you can see that all of these equal frequency binning results are worse than the original result, and the size of the tree is not hugely smaller either. So they're not really very good. Which method should you use? How many bins should you use? Well, these are experimental questions. There's a theoretical result called proportional k-interval discretization, which says that the number of bins should be proportional to the square root of the number of instances. That doesn't really help you very much in choosing the number of bins because it doesn't tell you what the constant of proportionality should be. It's an experimental question. More interesting question is how to exploit ordering information. In the numeric version of the attribute, and this is it at the top, the attribute value, we've got a value v here, and there's an ordering relationship between different values of this attribute. However, when we discretize it here into five different bins, then there's no ordering information between these bins, which is a problem. Because we might have a test in a tree is x less than v before discretization, after discretization, to get the equivalent test, we would need to ask is y equal to a, is y equal to b, y equal to c, and replicate the tree underneath each of these nodes. That's clearly inefficient and is likely to lead to bad results. There's a little trick here. Instead of, trans and instead of discretizing into five uh, different values, a to e, we can discretize into four different binary attributes, k minus one binary attributes. And the first uh, attribute here says whether the value v is in this range. And the second attribute, z2, says whether it's in this range, a or b. And the third, z3, says whether it's in this range, a, b, or c. And the fourth says whether it's in the first uh, four ranges. So if in our tree we have a test is x less than v, then if x is less than v, then z1, z2, and z3 are true, and z4 is false. So an equivalent test on the binary attributes are is x, sorry, is z3 equal to true. So if we take that tree we had before, testing on x less than v, an equivalent test is, is z3 true? And uh, then we have the same kind of uh, economy of uh, the tree underneath this without replicating different subtrees. That's very easy in Weka. We just go to our filter and we set make binary to true. And uh, you'll be using that option and finding out that it's really pretty good, actually, uh, quite a bit in the activity associated with this lesson. It makes sense, you know, that allows us to retain the ordering information that's implicit in the original uh, numeric attribute. So here's what we've done. We've looked at equal width binning and equal frequency binning, also called histogram equalization. We briefly considered how many bins. It's an experimental question. And we've talked about exploiting ordering information. In the next lesson, we'll talk about taking the class into account, supervised discretization. There's a bit uh, on the book and discretization. You should uh, do the activity, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.